go, get ready for it. We've got the VIPs, as they're called. Many of these are professional bike riders. They don't often start bike races like this in the modern era. Oh, go, no, no, go, no! Pete Harrison stood there, I don't know what he was looking at. <laughs> Missed the start massively. It's a great start for Steve Brogan. He's got away very, very well. Um, meanwhile, Steve Parrish right down at the back. How did the MB get away? I think Mike of the Lobs passed up to 10 riders already. Here he goes into turn one. So, yeah, magnificent start for the MV. So, like I said to you, it can be, it can go one of two ways, or really bad or really good. And I think it's uh, it's gone good for the MV of Mike of the Lobs so it's far. It's also gone well for John McGuinness. It's John McGuinness. I hadn't realised because number 12 initially got away very quickly. That's Steve Brogan. But John McGuinness and obviously nipped past into the first quarter. Look at the lead he's got. It's unbelievable. So, I don't know if he, if he maybe took a little hop or a jump there before, before the flag. But, yeah. Very energetic from the young John McGuinness. Yeah, very <laughs> the young man, yeah, into his early 50s now. Tommy Hill's going well, number 17. Uh, this is where we get a real mixture, and you can see there's a lot of dust down, a lot of slippery areas. That McGuinness pulling over? Yes, that is McGuinness. So McGuinness, who was leading number 45, is looking down. Yes, yeah, maybe dropped a gear, is a gear selector or something like that. He's looking down at his, at his foot, which means it's either a little bit of oil you can see or, or hopefully uh, maybe not a mechanical problem. Well, you've got Tommy Hill in front now, a British Superbike champion uh, back in 2011. Look at this group. I think the MV's up to the top 10 already, so we're going to get them across the line here, mate. Yeah, maybe even higher. Here he comes. Yeah, He's that's up it. the inside of Richard Cooper. So, yeah, I think uh, Mike and the Lops already well inside the, the top 10. But Michael Dunlop, number 42, the only MV Augusta in this race. Meanwhile, the battle up front, Tommy Hill, number 17, is the leader. Well, look at the slip and slide through oh, here. I, I don't envy these guys running through this cement dust right now, but... I think after one or two laps, all the guys are on the same line, and the line should clear up, so it should be should be ready to go. Third place for Davy Todd at the moment, and across the line they've gone officially sixth place for Michael Dunlop. What an amazing first lap! Um, the unbelievable start. So I, I, I can honestly see him trying to. There's no more no more issues with the bike. I can see him sort of pulling through here steadily and and taking the lead. Trying to come up onto Richard Cooper, number four. We've still got this good battle going on up front, though, between Steve Brogan and Tommy Hill. There's not much to choose between them. They're both on Norton Max 30Ms. That's what are the most uh, of we have in this race. More Nortons than we have of Matchless, and certainly more than the MV Augusta. We only have the one of those. Number 23, where well, you saw that uh, Billy McConnell's in there as well. Ooh, don't slide too much on the dust. Here we go. Look at this battle yeah, for the lead. Awesome here between uh, Steve Brogan and Tommy Hill, but as, as Michael just takes another another position there, I think he's up into, into fourth position now, fifth, just sitting in behind Richard Cooper. So we'll probably see from a wide shot here the speed of this MV. Look as he just rides past that, yeah. that Mike Snorton. So, yeah. <laughs> MV Augusta, of course, uh, uh, was an incredibly successful bike. It was created in the mid-60s. We've got more battles going on, and still this battle for the lead, and he's going to be joining the battle for the lead in a moment because he's now trying to go for third position to see if he can get past the number 23 bike of Davey Todd. Not quite there coming into the chicane, but look how close the whole group is. Yeah, it's awesome, and, and just because these bikes have sort of smaller horsepower, the, the slipstream pay is such a big part, but it's good to see John McGuinness has got the bike going again, whatever that small problem was at the start, he's still running, he's in 12th position, so hopefully he can try and get a few positions back up from there. Don't forget, they'll be swapping these bikes over, and uh, that could change things with different riders, so number 12 is still our leader, it is Steve Brogan, and now being passed is... Uh, Tommy Hill being passed by Davey Todd and Michael Dunlop's in that as well so there's a real chance for him to get up into a potential podium but it does depend how the rest of this race goes long the way to go yet yeah, 21 minutes yeah obviously because these are all the what are classed as pro riders now you still have the amateur or the, the VIP rider to come after so it's pretty much irrelevant as to what happens now. You could have some guy come out as a teammate and be one, two seconds a lap slower than what the, the pro rider is as, as Mike Dunlop takes another position. Yeah, Dunlop has got up there again. As I said, he is now up into potential podium of position and, and potential victory, there's no doubt. Remember, this bike came from the very back and it's gone into the lead already. So here we are. We're on the third lap. We haven't got to the end of the third lap yet. And it's into the lead from the very back of the grid. Yeah, it just, it just showed pure class there, right, right past the Brogan. So he, Michael's obviously riding the bike very, very well. Don't take that, take that away from him. But yeah, the, the, the BMB is indeed a, a, another class.
bit of traffic coming up already for some of the slower bikes down towards the back. But hopefully they can deal with that. But it's not all over yet because coming back immediately, Brogan has got a chance to get inside. Yep, he does. Quite a big shape at the head there of Mike and the Love going across the start and finish line. So I don't know if he's maybe signaled to the to the pit crew that there is a problem. He didn't point at anything or do anything. It was just a shape of the head. So possibly not all going uh, smooth sailing in the MV camp. The number 63 bike being lapped, uh, Adam Child, uh, that uh, bike, but I don't think that's working quite as well as it should be, because Adam's a, a quick rider. But uh, nonetheless, the battle for the lead is still going on between these two, very close. Michael Dunlop, number 42, trying to get back past Steve Brogan after he got past previous lap. Oh, my goodness, it's rare to see a pass there. Yeah, that, that was a little bit late and loose from Michael back on uh, Steve Brogan, but what a spectacular race to watch here. Even the battle right back to sort of 8th, ninth, 10th position, there's a massive group there of, of guys swapping places, so Michael's just having a look down here on his left-hand side as, as Brogan sort of comes back up, for, oh, slip straight past on the grass. <laughs> and he's looking across to say, what's wrong for you? They're kind of nodding at each other, even though they're racing so hard. I love this way that the bike riders can kind of communicate even when they're doing crazy speeds out of the end of the uh, 11th straight, the fastest section of the track. And Michael Dunn, oh, now it's Brogan who slowed down. Yeah, I think he went in there slightly hot and maybe didn't get back enough gears and then just lost the drive out of the out of the corner. And these, these bikes with lower speed is all about momentum. And if you lose that for one corner, you've got to suffer then down the rest of the straight. Davey Todd now takes the lead. And yes. I think... How he main ring is up into oh, second position. Yeah, he's in third, sorry, just in behind Michael the lap for now. It does look a little bit like the, the number 42 has, has got a bit of a problem on straight line speed, doesn't it? Uh, he seems to be able to get through the corners, OK? Do you think there's any problem? I don't know whether it would be a, an old term of there's a bit of foxing going on as to, as to what the bike is doing or what he's looking at. He's a very clever rider is, is Michael Dunlop and um, yeah hopefully I hope that the bike is, is mechanically sound and makes it to the end of the race as we all want to see this MV get a good result but the, this oh big crash there on oh. fourth position I don't know who that is down if we can no I didn't see which number that was as the leaders have come through it was a, a bike that was pretty far up the order they're in fifth just behind Harry Mearmering so there's a bit of a gap there now between Mearmering and Rutter so whoever was in that gap has just um fallen off so let's hope they're okay yeah let's hope so that's uh tricky that's on the exit of St Mary's on the approach down into Levant here we are still with the uh, leader and at the moment it is Davy Todd but he's under pressure from Michael Dunlop once again still in there is Steve Brogan who's led quite a number of laps here already and the gaps between all four bikes in fact that are up here now we've got uh, joining in there we haven't seen this so much is how he Mainwaring Smart to, in, on the match list. He's joined in as well, hasn't he? Yeah, and it's just interesting looking at the lap times there. They're a good two seconds a lap off what they were doing yesterday. So, obviously, this bit of oil, the dust down that was is in the last chicane and out the back of the track has, has affected the guys for the first few laps. So, hopefully, once that clears up, they'll get back to sort of the, the lap times that they were doing yesterday. So, maybe that's why we're seeing different riders in the in the group that are willing to maybe risk that little bit more just to, just to do the same lap time. Yeah, well, Davey told just about controlling on the Norton Manx at the moment. This is a 1960 bike. The Nortons were so successful in the, uh, the Manx races. Now we've got a very different kind of race here at Goodwood, but it's a great entertaining battle that's been going on. So far, rider that went off just a, a little while ago. We haven't seen any more. They haven't stopped the race, so hopefully the rider OK. Green flag on the uh, area past where he went off and through the back corner out onto the long, long Levant straight where they can open up the throttle and just try and tuck down as much as possible to get as high speed as they can through the air. Let's just take another look. Was this the off? Yes, I think it was around this time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's Tommy Hill, I believe. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Number yeah, 17. it is Tommy Hill. There he is, just um, admiring the scenery. So he's up and around and looks okay. So that's good for for anyone down there, family or friends that are watching. He seems to be he seems to be okay. But Steve Brogan has put a little a little bit of a stretch on here. He was good out the back part of the track, and he's managed to hold that gap. And luckily for him, in the last chicane there, whoever's on the BMW has held up held up a few people as well. So if um, if he can keep away this gap and not give the other guys a bit of a slipstream, this is good for Steve. 
lead. Oh, that's absolutely right, yeah. No, they've got a good opportunity. The pit window is open now, so riders are allowed in to swap over. But of course, remember, you've got the what they call the VIP riders on the bikes at the moment. A lot of them are true professional racers. Uh, they'll be going up to what they call the amateur riders, although I have to say in that group of amateur riders, there are some very experienced <laughs> racers as well. Um, but the pit lane is open, so you, you will be starting to see those bikes heading in. Yeah, what what we tend to do normally is obviously keep the keep the professional or the VIP P rider on the bike as long as possible if there is a if there is a decent lap time difference but we see Michael and Lopez closed right in here straight away so I, I believe there was a little bit of sandbagging going on for them for them few laps because he's, he's closed that probably second or two second gap within within uh, three or four corners so yeah this is going to be interesting now I think the the chaos of the pit stop will be will be happening within the next probably two two to three laps I think the windows for Michael Dunlop just had a little think of going up the inside. Is he going to have another little look into it, into Woodcut? I don't think so. He's going to follow through for the moment, sitting in a fairly comfortable third place on the MP Augusta. And uh, a bike that was one of the early versions that took so much success, the 500cc. Through, it was a version of a, a 350cc that the team had. And, of course, it led to Giacomo Agostini going on to seven world championship titles. He is now up into uh, the battle once again. And, in fact, going into the lead once again. So he's managed to nip past. Or has he? Is he going to stay there? I'm not sure he is, actually. Yeah, there's a lot of looking going on down the back straight. But, yeah, for, for the team, it's obviously you want to try and get into the pits first. I know that sounds silly because everyone wants the lead. But just for the actual organising of being fit to see pass, see your your staff, see the other rider. <laughs> they giving a wave. Rogan giving him a wave there around the outside. Are they just playing at this stage? I don't think so. I think they're still pushing on quite hard. Different lines being taken on the exit there and down in towards the van. This is an opportunity to get down the inside, but you've got to be wary because you always want a bit of slipstream on exit, don't you? Yeah, I believe that's what Steve was waving at. It, it, it prefers him to have the draft of the MV down the back straight because he knows he's going to get past. So if he can sit in Michael's slipstream now and possibly pass into the last uh, last and then he's got a better chance of getting into the pits early if, if that's what he wants to do in this lap. We've got back mark coming up here. I think it's Maria Costello, so let's hope. Let's hope that doesn't get involved in the in the race lead. No, absolutely. Well, let's see what happens. Michael Dunlop is the leader at the moment as they come out of Woodcote up towards the chicane. Yeah, and as you say, just uh, just up ahead of them, it is Maria Costello, number 75. Uh, she keeps well out of the way. In fact, she's heading into the pits for the pit stop now. So this is still your lead group. Look at it, four abreast. Yes, um, because the bikes are quite slow compared to modern bikes. Oh no, the MV is the MV stopped. Oh, this is not good. Oh really? Michael Dunlop pulling over. Oh no! Oh, what a shame. And uh, so suddenly something happened. The race really is up for grabs now because you've got three, four Nortons there. Is there a matchless in that group as well? So, oh, that's very disappointing to see the the beautiful MV pull over to the. The right hand side. And that's really disappointing for Andy Hornby, who was due to take the bike over from Michael Dunlop. And they did so much work on it yesterday, driving up to Birmingham for his team, or the team that run it. Um, and they'll be so disappointed as well. Yeah, I know the work that goes in, obviously, riding for that team. As, as with all the teams, these guys, like I say, who drove to Birmingham last night and put all this time and effort into these beautiful bikes. But Unfortunately, when, when something is of that time frame and you're trying to do these things on it... Oh, we can see Steve Parrish in the pits here and, and Freddie Sheen, the, the son of uh, Leif Boris Sheen, just getting on for his stint. Yeah, they're a bit further down the order. They're not up in this battle for the lead. Little little elbow shot. What does that mean between bike oh, it's, it's a polite move move out of my way. I don't know if you can say <laughs> the, the correct term on here, but yeah. So it'll be interesting now to see if anybody in this... We normally put a leg out or a hand out just to signal if you're in a group just to give the other guys, so if you're coming out of that last key and you're going to be rolling off instead of getting on the throttle, but they're all seem to be going for another lap right now, yeah. Yeah, so this lead group is still very much the same lead group, but we don't have Michael Dunlop in it anymore, so it is Ian Brogan who is now leading the race, and uh, we'll just have to see. Howie Mainwaring Smart is right up there with the matchless. That's good to see, up amongst the Nortons. That's, that's running quite strongly at this stage. Yeah, always wanting to see a variation of bikes, but it's interesting, there's two or three people in this group so the likes of Davy Todd his teammates is, is quite fast as well Michael Rutter's teammate is quite fast Steve Brogan's team so it's really interesting that they're 
partners are going to get on and be within the same sort of position. So it, it, it hopefully means there's going to be quite a close race for the second part as well. They're putting on a wonderful show here at Goodwin as we enjoy the Barry Sheen Memorial Trophy. We've just seen Barry's son, Freddie, go out uh, after Steve Parrish has done the first stint in the race. And we're watching a, a great fight up front between this group of bikes. There's nothing to choose between them and they still have to make their pit stops and swap over uh, to the other riders. So we could see some big changes in this before the end. But uh, even now you can see it's a good move for Davy Todd who goes back in front of Ian. And uh, I wonder, are they going to come in yet or are they going to stay out just that little bit longer? Yeah, it looks really strong, Davy Todd's bike there. He got an early slipstream off Steve Brogan, but the bike carried on the whole way down the back straight. And there, Brogan, you see him putting his hand out there on his foot, so he signaled, yeah, two. So is Howie Me and Murring Smart. So these guys, oh, they're all coming into the pits now, so this is going to be interesting at the same time. So, like I said, you want to be fit to see your team as, as Brogan tries to pass in pit lane. This is funny that the lead group have all come in. It's obviously we're coming up towards the time where you have to have made your stop, and they've all decided to come in at exactly that same time. So it's difficult to uh, make sure everyone gets a clean stop. There is a, they will be timed. They can't go out too rapidly, but that's all nicely done. And straight back out there is the number 23. This time George Thomas riding the number 23. It's also a good getaway for Michael Russell, as you mentioned, up with Michael Rutter, the two Michaels. Uh, they were right, right up on the front row at the beginning of this, and they're in good shape, number 68. Yeah, this is awesome, obviously, for the for the remaining eight, eight and a half minutes of the race now to have the lead group as sort of it's just re reoccurred out, out of the pit lane as what way it went in. So that's awesome. that No one's really made any big losses in the pits, I don't believe. And uh, it's going to be one on the track. It is indeed. Number 12 uh, is now being ridden by Ian Bain. Uh, but well, this has been a really good getaway for Michael Russell. And he is uh, a very experienced racer, a multi-winner of Irish road races and wins at the Max GP as well. Um, he He's a top racer. You've, you, you, I'm sure you've raced against him plenty. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange parent because obviously David Todd is a current young rider and Michael Russell is a, a current young rider as well. So. There's going to be uh, a few old boys in the in the pits after this one having a bit of a moan about um, <laughs> the, the situation of this team. But no, credit to credit to both of them. They're riding we're riding that Norton really hard. Yeah, they are. There's a battle, a bit more of a battle for second place that is hotting up a touch at this stage. George Thomas currently in second, number 23, uh, being fought though by Ian Bain, who's. Uh, had wins, more than 30 wins in historic races in bikes, uh, and he's won at the Goodwood uh, Revival in the past. He's a, a bike restorer as well, but um, so he knows how to work on the bike and he knows how to ride the bike pretty well. Yeah, I think just Thomas is starting to break away there. We just can't see him in the in the camera. Oh, he is number 23. So yeah, this this is this is all heating up now to be a really good battle right to the end, and it, that's good also for the pro riders because there's nothing worse than getting off your bike in a in a good position and then and then obviously just dropping back. So yeah, it's going to be a, a good close fought battle right to the end. Now I've actually missed this because the number one two five bike is actually in front at this stage. So that's uh, Glen English because they I thought that bike probably had pity, but it is recorded as pitting at the same time. So I'm a bit confused because I didn't see it in the lead group before the pit stop. Yeah, so I honestly can't give you any uh, proper information about that. So I don't know. Maybe there's a little problem with our timing screen right now because that is English currently on the bike now. And I did not see Steve Clear in the front, in or even around the front group. So I think maybe the bike has hasn't pitted or certainly being shown a lack of information yeah our screen is showing it has pitted and it's going at a good pace although now the 68 does go past so that means that we're sort of rejigged to where michael russell is in front so this is the bike that's uh, being officially listed as the the race leader and uh, number 125, but we hadn't seen it earlier on. This is another of the matchless uh, bikes. It was, this bike has been ridden by Wayne Gardner here at uh, Goodwood before, wobbling around a bit. <laughs> he's certainly going for it. Yeah, he's trying there as uh, Graham English. So it's very interesting. I don't know how, no, maybe even over the start line now, the timing system. No, no, he's still in, he's still in second yeah. place. So we've, we've ever not done our job right and not seen that at the start of the race, but... 
I think they pitted early. That was the thing. I think what what threw us a little bit is that uh, um, they came in early. Steve Plater was riding it early, um, and he pitted early. And when he came, when they swapped and came out, Glenn's obviously put in some very good laps, and that's what's put him up there. Now he's not leading anymore, but he's still not far behind our race leader. There is our race leader, number 68, Michael Russell, share, Russell sharing with uh, Michael Rutter. Rutter did the first part. Russell now leading this race, having to get past the number 125, but caught us out a little bit because it wasn't in that lead group that we were so focused on. It was due to a slightly different pit stop time. So that does make sense, and we'll see how this develops. Now, the battle for the final podium slot as well. That's interesting because the number 23 bike has dropped back a, a few places, so George Thomas has, has dropped back a touch, hasn't he? Yeah, I was expecting him sort of to be still in this in this lead group because from the, the times and practice and stuff, he was able to put in quite good, good time. So hopefully there's nothing wrong uh, mechanically with that bike. And then obviously Brogan or Bean is only another two seconds behind him. So this, this battle for, for Todd and Thomas might end up being off the podium. Let's see how it works. Uh, for the moment, it's still the, the Norton Max 30M that we have plenty of in this race that is leading. But the matchless G50, uh, not so many of this in the race, but it's still very much on the terms. Only 0.7 of a second behind as they went over the line. So I tell you what, uh, Glenn English is still riding this superbly well. The G50 single cylinder 500 was uh, generally made available for privateers in the late 50s and competed against the Norton Manx in period. And here we are, we've got the competition carrying on in 2023 between these two major bike manufacturers in the 1960s. Yeah, and I just had a little glance over at the timing screen there. And like I said earlier, these um, are uh, another 10. Uh, pulling off, yeah, that's Mick Grant and Jimmy May's bike. So it's Jimmy on it now. Uh, that's another Norton Manx. And that's a shame. Of course, Mick Grant, a seven-time TT winner, um, but it's uh, Nick May, I think, who's had to pull off uh, some mechanical sh uh, issue with it. Yeah, like I'm saying, so the, the lap times that English and Russell are doing now are as quick, if not quicker, than what the, the pro guys were doing earlier. So this is this is what we mean by having a, a quality classic riding partner. And yes, the lead the lead's nearly swapped again, so this is a good battle for the win here. We have a real battle for the win, don't we? With three minutes to go, um, it is very, very close between the top two now. So you've still got this one to keep an eye on, because Michael Russell, number 68, our race leader, but just look how close behind. I think Glenn English is keeping the pressure on all the time. Looks to me he's taking a few more risks the way he's riding. Yeah, he's, he's definitely not lacking an effort, but looking at the time now, so we're down to 2 minutes 46, so that means the, the guys should get another two laps in. So we've got two laps of, of a very heated racing here as the tip in to, to turn one past the back marker. So, yeah, this is, this is going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, that was a wide entry into Madrid uh, for Glenn in second place. Whereas Michael had to go in a little tighter, so good exit speed. So what's going on in the battle for Yeah, the battle third? for third is really is down to point two. So uh, Thomas has pulled pulled nearly two seconds on on Bean. Oh no, he's through. So back up, Bean is now up in the third position past Thomas. Um, so yeah, like I said earlier, Todd and Todd and Thomas now have dropped out of that podium battle. Right, so we've got two battles going on, but it's for the win at the moment that we're really focused on with less than two minutes to go. So there's the battle for the final podium slot. That is very, very close indeed. And look at that, side by side as they come down towards Levant and onto the straight. Pick up the slip street. We've got two battles. Where are we going to watch? There's the lead battle. And actually this time, it is Michael Russell who's pulled away a touch more. Oh, my goodness. Glenn was almost on the grass there, just trying to straighten out that little curve that you have to do on the way down into Woodcut. Yeah, it's all about momentum on these on these little bikes. So yeah, this the, the poor uh, TV man doesn't know which which battle to look at. So awesome racing here at Goodwood for both for the win and for third third position. Yeah, for the moment it's George Thomas in that third place, sharing the bike with uh, Davy Todd. And here we go then. This is the last lap. The checkered flag will be out when they come around and around the outside. Can it work to take the lead? It is in front. And uh, no, it's not quite. A weird from, from Mike Russell. <laughs> <laughs> So it didn't quite work, but it so nearly did. This is a great battle between them. Uh, we have seen it as an infringement uh, penalty for one bike, but it's not one of the leaders. Uh, so it's not affecting anything here that we've got. We've still got a great race for the win. I, I 
think into the last chicane there was a there was a back marker as well that's impeded um, Ian Bain a little bit. So there's a gap now for third position of a second. So we'll see if that gets closed down. So realistically now going into this last right hander, you're probably better off in second position to get the slipstream onto the back straight. So um, oh, Russell's got a really good run out of there though. So uh, see if English now can get in the in the slipstream. Well, it's oh, the other way around. You see, English oh, had already sorry, got yeah. past. English had already taken the lead, and now, but I think you're. Right. I think you're right. I think my, Michael Russell might be timing this perfectly. He let it through on the last lap. And now as they go down the Lovett straight, he uses that slipstream speed to go ahead into the final corner, into Woodcut. He's oh, got no some traffic up ahead as well. So he's got to be a bit cautious as they come up towards the chicane. Oh, There's an right. attempt by Glenn English. He's done it. He's yeah. gone down the inside. Glenn English, what a perfect performance from Glenn English sharing with Steve Plater. They take the victory. Memorial, second place for Michael Rutter and Michael Russell. Wow!